Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is larger structures. As you can see here we have a whole bunch of larger structures using a couple different components for structure pot, pot, structure pot parts and what I've done is I've color coded them so you can kind of see that they are different. So there's four different types in total that I've basically combined and these are the largest um, parts that the structure block can save. So this is the literally the largest structure that you can create. Now the only downside to this is there is limitations with jigsaw blocks and structures in general for how um, they basically render the distance and stuff of how far things can go. So basically what you're looking at is the widest uh, diameter of structures that you can actually have. So it's a little bit larger technically, but because this is the structure size doesn't match up evenly with the actual structure um, size for the the actual saving for the thing and the actual structure for the setting. It has to be like this. It's actually can support like up to 127, I think. So it's a little bit larger, but due to the size of the structures and stuff, it's not really possible to fit that entire thing into this one structure. So with that being said, there are some things that I have noticed with generating structures of this size. Um, one of them being that things like this can happen. So if it spawns at a higher altitude like this, uh, most likely it spawned over on this corner somewhere. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was somewhere around here. I don't know. But uh, what's happened is it's basically gone over the, um, the land and kind of leaves this huge gap down here. This can be fixed by basically adding additional blocks down. So additional structures like for foundations or something like that. You could also try blending it in with your structure as well. So trying to blend it a little bit more, that would be an option. Um, but overall, this is basically what you get in some cases. Uh, another example uh, can be found over here. This is kind of in the ground, but not in the ground. Uh, this would be an ideal time for a foundational block because it is within that stretch of the height of the block. Now you can go at least two structure blocks down without needing to worry about running into the bottom of the world. Uh, though the cap for this would be just the single layer on the surface because if it does spawn on a hill or something like that that is 256 then the size of the structure here won't really fit into that. Um, like adding another one will actually go over the structure height so you don't want to do that because then your structure will be cut off right so there are limitations with larger structures as you can see so all right so let's go into my test world and we can go ahead and take a look how i set it up i believe it's this one just used a void world for testing now this is kind of like a example of how it could do something similar to foundations on a smaller scale. So basically, if you wanted to do the whole foundation thing, this would be your foundation. These would be the blocks that connect to it. This is the other block. And then you have like connection blocks like that for these parts over here. So basically, this would connect to that one. This would probably be our main structure because it's branching off from all directions, down and up so, or left. And then we would have our generation from here to this one, which would generate our other um, foundational part. And then we have this one that connects to the one that generates over here. So that's generally the principle of how you want to do it. As you can see, I've done that basically on a larger scale just for the surface structure. So this is actually the one that generates uh, initially. So what I have here, um, is basically the target name. So basically, as you can see here, I've just set the target name to A because A is somewhere around here. And this is the target, uh, target name for B. So B is what we're going to be targeting and A is what we're targeting here. I put this under my own namespace for the mod because that's where it's going to be for our pool and everything like that. So it's important to do that. 
Same thing with the structure name. So I'll be covering that in just a second. But other things that I've done is basically just generated bricks instead. So it basically just replaces that block with bricks and when it's finished generating. And we can go over to the next one. And this one should be B or yeah, this is the connection for B. As you can see, we're not using the target name and we're not using the pool. We just left that as the Minecraft empty and that will just tell the game not to run anything from it. But we have set our name to B, which is what we're generating over on this part. And you might notice a pattern that we're, that's happening as I've lined them all up in a row. And that way I can figure out where the placement for all these jigsaw blocks need to go. So for example, this is going to be generating B. B is the next one over. And then B is also generating, I think, C. So yeah, C is generating over on this side. So as you can see, the difference between this is target and pool. This is empty. And then we're setting our replacement bricks, whatever we want. We can even use air if we really wanted to. And this one's just using name where target pool and target name are empty. This is the general principle for jigsaw blocks for generating things. So for example, if you wanted it to generate it, something, you'd use this method where the pool and target name are selected, but not the name. And for actually connection points for parts that are in your structures, you basically go no target pool or target name and just the name itself. And then you can select this if you want to. So the other two parts are actually the parts that connect over on this one. This one over here, you might have remembered that the connection point was over on this side. So we have our A selection. This is just using the name. This will generate, um, will be generated when the main block over there is actually generating it. And then we have the other one over here, which is on this side. This is the same side as where B is basically generating it. So this is your C connection. And if you wanted to add downwards connections, you could go anywhere along this line basically and just add a jigsaw block to the list. So we could go and do something like this. And then we could connect up to a foundational part just make sure that you name your foundational part something. And just remember the target name and the name aren't actually used in the pool. The pool. Uh, this is just to tell the when, the, when it generates, to tell it what parts can actually connect, right? So the, the only thing that you need to worry about really is the pool name, which is what we're gonna cover quickly again, because I noticed that some people are still having issues with jigsaw blocks, so, one of the things that we need to look at in mCreator is what the structure is actually called. In this case, it's large. So that's going to be our structure itself, right? Um, when you're working with the pool name, it's going to be generating something else. So what we can do to predict what the name is going to be called, we're just going to open up the registry. So if you right click on the element and then go down to edit registry name, we're not going to actually edit it, but we're going to look at what it says. So this one just says lowercase large. Now, if, if it's more complex for your structure, we might have something like uh, large structure, or we'll just do STR for um, structure. And we can open up the registry. And in this case, it's underscore STR. So Basically what that's going to do is this is where your starting pool is going to be for your actual structure. This will make sense in a second because I'm going to go back into game. We're going to look at the, the pool that I've used. So it's under our own namespace. Our namespace can be tested by going into our workspace settings, although we're running the game right now, so we can't do that. I'll cover that in just a second. And then we see that the structure name is or the registry the structure registry is actually this part right here so it's large and then underscore and then this is the pool the custom pool name that i've actually given it so this is just called main all structure um, pools that i've used are in the same main 
category. So we can go to, I think B had a, one that generates as well. I think it might be this one. Yeah, so you can see that it's also in the main pool category. Same pool. This is the registry of the structure. As you can tell, we have the large structure there and everything else is set up accordingly. So, all right, so how do you actually get the thing generated? We'll cover that in just a second. All right, so the registry name is for your mod is, or not the registry name, the namespace for your mod could be found under the workspace settings. It is the mod ID slash namespace. So it's this one right here. Um, if you remember correctly, we were using that for our pool and our actual name for the structures themselves. So the target name and the name. Just keep that in mind when you're actually setting up your pools. You can go back and take a look at how I set it up um, and pause the video and stuff like that. But we'll continue right now So with the larger structure. So in this case, what I've done is I've calculated the amount of structures that it would be for actually generating it um, back to back. And that's why they were so close together is that this is the settings that I've set. And because they're large um, structures and stuff, it's basically just generating them with like one block um, distance away from each other. So that's basically what, or one chunk, pardon me. So that's basically what's going on here. The real thing that actually turns out to be the problem though is the maximum distance. So the maximum distance, as you can see, is at 28. And as I'm clicking on going up, it doesn't actually go any further. And that's because the game uh, Minecraft not too long ago I remember them changing something with nether structures and they've capped it at 128 blocks so if you remember that structure um, jigsaw block or I think structure blocks can save up to 48 in structure structure size that won't equal out to a full 20 128 so the, the closest thing that you can have is um, two two like we've done because if you go over that amount, it might not generate properly in the area and it might cut out the structure. So just keep that in mind when you're actually generating it. Now we can go up and we can go down and all that other stuff. That's fine. When I've exported the structures, I've basically imported them into our resources and then structures. And then these are the ones that I've basically named i've used names that are relative to the corner that they're in so northeast northwest southeast and southwest that makes it easier for me to know which side i need to actually work on so if we go back into the larger structure and we go to the starting one uh starting page is down here we can see that we started with the southeast so then i needed to still generate the southwest and south um uh, southwest, so northwest, and northeast. So those are basically the ones that I've set up here. I've given them an even probability for weight because weight doesn't really matter when you're doing it this method because there's only one particular block that can actually replace in that corner. Now, if you're adding different variations of the structure, then you could basically adjust the weight or create a new pool, pool or something like that if you really wanted to. Uh, in most cases, though, you don't really need to worry about it. It could be all under the main uh, thing that you created for your pool name. So this is the pool name. If you remember, we had the pool name set to main. And this is basically where it comes in because we have larger structure. And then this is the part after it. It has an underscore and then a, our name that we give the pool. So basically, this is the pool name that I've given it, which is called main. And then we would have... Uh, large underscore main and then that would be our pool name so that's basically what's going on here i didn't add a uh, fallback pool because i didn't really anticipate any parts not generating uh, it's within our seven generation layer so it shouldn't be a problem uh, the most that it actually goes to with the parts that connect to the far end uh, i would believe it's like up to three so only three um, additional generation layers that it would have. So if you're doing foundations, I think it would be additional one every layer that you go down. So it would still be within the layer 
uh, level, I think it would equal out to five. So it's still within the seven range. You could still add props and stuff like that up to a layer level of two. So you have quite a bit of flexibility doing it with this method. It's just, you have to keep in mind that the structures underneath would be, um, in some cases, floating over air. So you have to put a foundation or something in. But um, like I said, you could build the foundations, decorate them, make it look pretty good. Or you could go with uh, train generation, just kind of blend it in with the structure and then use structure voids to kind of around the layer that the foundation is. So it basically overrides other, or allows other blocks to override the structure voids. That would be an option as well. Um, I have covered structure voids in the past, so if you guys want another tutorial on that, um, maybe an updated one, I can cover how that all, the whole structure saving system works in a future video though. Um, I think that's pretty much good for today. But um, outside of that, that's basically how it all works. I'm using rigid because that allows the structure to keep its form, where train matching is basically um, blends it in with the 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 foundation of or the, the blocks under now underneath the structure which makes the blocks lose their form so for regular like prop generation like mountains or something like that that would work because then it would all kind of fall down to the the surface but with rigid for things in most cases where you want your structures and stuff to generate this is basically where it's what you would want for your structure generation so hopefully this has helped kind of help you with uh, figuring it out um, with the structures as well. But if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.